everybody. Um, I just want to say, EJ, it was so amazing to see you know, you sitting in your power, someone who looks like you in your position. I have to say that was incredibly inspirational. I was meant to be in the green room, but I had to come up just to witness that. Um, and I don't think anyone's mentioned this yet, but Stephen Bartlett is going to be gracing this stage later. So um, I've been more excited than I usually am for this particular conference. But actually, um, not to lower the tone, but actually I want to take uh, some time with you today. I've got a very short window to talk to you about something I think which is very important and has been knocked off our agenda. And that's bias, how that leads to unconscious bias and a project we've been working on at News UK called Think Twice. A little bit about me, um, I am Head of Diversity, Equity and Inclusion at News UK. For those that aren't familiar with News UK and the brands that we have, it's The Times, The Sunday Times, The Sun, TalkSport, Virgin Radio, Talk TV. And I've been developing the diversity strategy at News UK since 2020. And me and my incredible team who are here today have the job of addressing the underrepresentation in our newsrooms and our business as a whole. And obviously central to that is creating a culture of inclusivity and it's something that we take very seriously because actually if you focus on a culture of inclusivity, recognise differences, raise awareness um, to different cultures and people and most importantly what you do with that is you break down the biases. But unconscious bias, I'm sure most of you haven't even been speaking about it for the last few years because in 2020 we all had a really, really culturally conscious wave. We wanted to know about our biases. We wanted to know if we were racist. But actually, what seems to have happened now is it's being attacked so much. Diversity training is under attack, and this is what really supports creating inclusive cultures. I want us to just take us back a little bit and get us into the mindset of bias. What age do you think bias actually starts. Literally shout it out. Anyone? Did someone say seven? <laughs> as early as six months old, a baby can start to notice race-based differences. Look at these two. You can't ever imagine that they'd have any kind of biases to each other. But our children, they're like little sponges. So what happens is over those formative years, between the ages of like two to four, they're absorbing everything they're seeing around them. Innocently, the gender stereotypes at home, all oh, the books that they're reading, all the characters appear to be white, the people in charge are white. Oh, and the men are firemen, but the women are playing with dolls or their nurses or their teachers. All of these things really innocently seep into our children's psyche. Tells them who's good, who's bad, who's in charge. I had an example of this this weekend with my own children. So Mark in my team um, had a really important conversation with my son, who's six years old on Friday. It's part of the job that he has to entertain my children. And um, they were having an important conversation about how you get to level 74 in Fortnite. And Ollie was just like, God, you're so cool. Anyway, all weekend I just heard, I want to make friends with Hudson Kaboom, AKA Mark in my team. And then I said, okay, okay, fine. He said, Mummy, how do you know this great guy called Hudson Kaboom? And I said, oh, he actually works in my team. OK, I'm his boss. <coughs> You're a boss, Mummy. I was like, oh, my God, have I not done anything in this home to make you see that I am actually a boss? And I could talk about this for hours because I find it fascinating. I think we can learn so much from our children and how they perceive society. But what I'm essentially trying to say is biases start very early and they're unconsciously being absorbed. I'd like you to watch this video. Boom. Literally, oh my God, the scare, the shock. You're like, she's, oh my God, how's she going to escape? All these bad guys at the end, she's actually the perpetrator, not the victim. We can't help that. 
it's how we're conditioned. We unconsciously have absorbed who are the good guys, who are the bad guys. It takes us time, and at the end, you're like, oh, the realisation. Oh, sorry. Let me, oh, you've seen the beautiful picture too soon. <laughs> this, as David Kahneman, who um, wrote a really fantastic book, Thinking Fast and Slow, talks about the two systems in our brain. So that first system, it's fast, it's intuitive, it's super, super lazy, it's driven by emotion. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm telling you now, I live in system one my whole life. If you know me, my heart is here and it's just pulsating all the time. Um, system two is slow, it's conscious, it's effortful. We have to actually get into that brain and we have to work that little bit harder. But also, system two brain is what we need if we want to think twice and start breaking down some of our biases. That's a whistle stop tour. I really haven't done him enough justice. Please go and get the book. But I've only got 14 minutes. I want to tell you a story. And I didn't just put this picture up because we look so fly. Um, this is me and my son and we went to Marrakesh uh, recently and it was one of the most incredible holidays. I highly recommend Marrakesh. But I had a really, really uncomfortable incident that happened and I shared it on LinkedIn a few weeks ago and got an overwhelming response. And I thought, actually, it's very, very relevant for today. So we took a low-cost airline. I wanted to ensure we weren't sitting on the toilet next to someone that we didn't like. So we booked a uh, speedy boarding. So we got through the... Um, gate, got up to where we're going to get checked in, and then, honestly, travelling with two boys as a single mum is one of the most challenging things you can ever imagine. But get to the front, they're like, speedy board has come forward. I'm like, fantastic, right, come on, boys, let's get forward. Step forward, a woman puts her hand out and says, excuse me, you don't have speedy boarding, so can you step back? I'm totally bewildered, also exhausted. I'm thinking, why have you assumed this of me? Actually, I do have speedy boarding. I'm there with my two sons. My oldest son even realised, said, why does she assume that we don't have speedy boarding? Rather than apologise, shrugs, pushes me, um, tells me to go and, and, and board the plane. That aggression, the way it ripped through me, the way it made me feel. But this is something that happens every single day if you're black, brown, disabled, all the time and what I found on LinkedIn is so many people are having these experiences but we're not talking about them. So we know it exists, we're all experiencing it, it's a huge problem in our workspaces, in our media and our society but why aren't we confronting it? I want to take it back a little bit and I just want to talk about some of the work we do at News UK. So, as I mentioned at the beginning, we've been developing our diversity strategy since 2020. And when we launched, we had investment, brilliant team put together, executive buy-in, focused on three key areas, recruitment and retention. We need to transform our newsrooms. We need to change the diversity of our newsrooms in the UK. Inclusive products. We're a shop front, so of course we're speaking to millions of people. We have to make sure our products are as inclusive as possible. And diversity and leadership. How do we make sure we create an equitable workspace where all people can thrive into leadership? Obviously fundamental to that is a diversity training programme. Our programme was amazing, and I'm sure lots of you in this room created fantastic diversity training programmes. Where are they now? They did incredibly well. Hundreds of people, as I said, were really, really on the conscious wave, wanted to do them. A couple of years later, started to dwindle. And actually, training programmes have been proven now to be fantastic at raising awareness and making people feel like they're doing something good. Is that leading to long-lasting change? That's quite limited. This is what led to the Think Twice project. This is a new project for us at News UK and one that we're developing. So it's hot off the press for all of you. <laughs> so you should be really, really feel really, really exclusive here. In 2022, on Times Radio, we started monitoring the gender of one show, the guests, sorry, of one show, just to see if we'd get to 50-50 male, female. We then expanded that out to all Times Radio shows. Since 2022, we've seen an, a difference from 37% to 42% female guests. Not only that, we've actually been putting it into a league table. So we've created competition. People see it going round. People want to make sure that they're improving all the time. Simply 
measuring the data and getting people to just stop, think for a moment, has significantly um, changed the demographics of people coming on the show. We're now broadening that out to all of our broad broadcast stations. Why did this work? We've said now, this is a system one brain interruption. Rather than just telling you, can you please just book more female guests? Actually, we're going to interrupt you and give you some tools to make sure that you think about doing it. I want to leave you with our mantra and something that we're going to be developing out more. It's now your new mantra. So you can take a photo of this at the end. Think twice and respond. Michelle Moore, my coach, she always talks to me about this. She's like, actually, Shelley, what you need to do is listen to understand and then respond. And I've actually started utilising this in my whole life because sometimes, as I said, heart's here, boom, want to react. Actually, if you stop, pause, think about it, your response is always better. What is missing? Could there be another angle? Could there be other people that you could include in that? Include other perspectives. Challenge your beliefs. Why have you come to that conclusion? What data points are you using to get there? And encourage others to do the same. This is a real growth mindset, but it's such a simple mantra that you can be using, not just in your workspaces, in your home, in your lives completely. So as I said, this is a project that we are developing out at News UK, and it's one that as soon as I'm developing it and, and, and we're creating new tools and mechanics that work in it, we're going to be sharing that. So do follow me on LinkedIn for any updates. For now, thank you so much. And like you, I look forward to Stephen Bartlett later. <laughs>